Okay, today's Objective C tutorial will be the local and local notifications tutorial. This one will help you with the alarm clock, because uh, once you use the date picker to pick a date, and it says, um, I think you're supposed to make an alarm function out of this. This is an alarm function, but it sends a notification, and it works with date formats, and it works with strings and numbers and stuff, which is why it's in this set, in the Objective C set. So this tutorial is going to demonstrate how to add the local notification as well to your iPhone application or your iPad application. And the local notifications are, were added in iOS 4. So if you're using something a little bit below this, you can't use this. So I can't imagine anyone, unless you've got a very old computer with a very old Xcode version on it, even being able to use anything prior to it. So there are notifications that originate from the phone itself as opposed to somewhere outside of the phone. We're going to or we're going to initiate. We're going to initialize and create a notification ourselves inside of the inside of the app. So you can set the app to give out a notification at a certain time. This is used to set a reminder for yourself, so that if the app is active, the notification will go to the "Did receive local notification" method in the app delegate. So you use the app delegate for it. And if your app is not actively running, then in the background it will be displayed as an alert. So it'll come out. It'll still work, but one of them is going to show an alert. The other one's going to show a notification. In our emulator, I'm going to do the notification because that's more interesting. Uh, but you could kill the app, and then it would be running as a. It'll come up as an alert. So the first thing we need to do is create a single view application and, and call it notification or notify. Um, so we're not going to use the story bar, but we're going to use automatic reference counting. So let's see. Single view application, and I'm going to call this one notice. I'll just call this one notice. Notice and uh, using it for the iPhone sounds pretty good. There we go. And I'm just going to put it on my desktop. So you can do this for assignment number four in the iOS class for the alarm clock. You can set this, you can do the same technique actually. <laughs> but you'll get the time instead of hard setting it, you'll get the time from the picker from what the user selects, which you already have already, hopefully working from another tutorial I gave you already. So let's see, we'll just create our user interface. So open up the view controller, the XIB file, and we're going to create two text fields and a button. And we're also going to add a couple labels to make it look nicer. Here's what the screen should look like. So create a new notice. And uh, this is just a text field down here, in this month, day, year, hours, and minutes, to tell the user what they're going to type in here. They're going to put a date in here. I'm going to put a text message. So this is notes to self, really. <laughs> so I'm going to be creative on my interface, and I'll just call it notes to self. So I'm opening up my XIV file. This is second nature. You guys should be able to do this blindfolded at this point, <laughs> which is funny because people are still emailing me. Students are saying, the assignments are too hard. I'm like, wait a minute now. What class are you in? <laughs> or not in? They're not that hard. Uh, okay, so let's see. Uh, I'm going to call this one Notes to Self. Notes to, note to Self. Make it interesting at least. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see, I'll center it. Make your uh, display like any way you want it to. There we go. That oh, looks pretty good. Okay, so now let's see. That's the hard part. Let's put the uh, text boxes up there. So put one box here. Another box down here. Uh, so one of them's got, I guess I could put a text field in here instead of a text box if I wanted to put more than one line, but it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to put, actually I should have put more labels on here. So this one's going to be the date, so I'll put up here date. And this one's going to be the message. MSG. Sounds like salt, MSG. <laughs> All right, so let's see. I uh, know there's like no humor here today. <laughs> I'm usually I get a chuckle or something out of somebody. Uh, month, day, year, one, two, three, four, 
One, two, three, four. Hours and minutes. Hours colon minutes. Uh, oh, I need a thing that says create notice. I need a button down there too. So I'm going to go ahead and throw a button on the bottom here. And this button down here is going to say create notice. See, at least you can say after the time that you have finished this course, which is coming up actually, not too, not too long, not too long away here. You should at least have the confidence to do what we're doing right now. I would hope, and like in your sleep. Like, okay, I want to create a new app and just create it and just start populating it and start wiring it and working on the functionality without actually having to worry about what am I supposed to be doing? So it's, we've definitely drilled this with at least, I want to say we're working on about the 30th or so app that we've built in class. We've done a lot of apps, which is kind of like the only way you can do it is just practice it. So click on the editor, you know that already as well. And then, uh, you know, we wire everything to the .h file, right? Uh, so we're going to come in here and we're going to wire to the viewcontroller.h. And what are we going to wire? We're going to give it uh, the UI text field is going to be called date. And the, uh, well, the one for date is going to be called dates. And then the one for text is going to be called text. So I'm going to do that. And then the button is going to be called create. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to wire. Uh, date to date, text to text. So we know we do this and we control drag it down here. Again, second nature. This one's going to be called date. And this one's going to be called uh, text. Text. And we know we're going to do this one as an IB action. Right? We're wiring an IB action for an IB outlet. So we're going to right mouse click on it. I'm not going to, on the midterm, on the final, midterm final, I'm not going to ask you what are all the I don't even know how many there are here. <laughs> what are in the world are these things? <laughs> I'm not going to ask you to memorize that. Uh, but the concept of wiring it should be uh, so the touch up inside looks pretty good to me. And uh, what's this one going to be? Create. Let's just take a look from the tutorial here. It's going to be called Create. Create. And we know what the type ID is. I always put it on what it is, though. That way, when I look at the code, I know what it was, even if I forget what it was. Because if I do this, it puts UI button instead of ID in here, which is why I do that. You don't actually have to do that. That's my bad. That's that's my. I just say my bad. That's my way of doing it. There's a lot of people that want that leave it on ID, which is the default. Don't change it. But then when I'm looking at this, if I forget what was that, it's a button. It's a UI button. I know what it is. So, but it, this is called an IB action. The data type actually. Remember, these are data types. The data type is an IB action. If I flip it over to the .m file, I'm going to see that the IB action is also down here as well, in terms of the method. So I'm going to go back because I want to do one more thing. I want to get rid of that pesky keyboard. So and let's see, make sure it's in here. Yeah, the did end on exit event. I'm going to remove the keyboard. So this is remove keyboard is the name of the method, or I can say call it done, call it whatever you want. See at this point, you should be able to call it whatever you want, <laughs> and you should know how to remove the keyboard. So if we right mouse click on the text fields, we've done this at least a dozen times. We know that we can wire the text field as a property, which is what we did. We know that we can wire the text field as an action as well. So we know we can wire the did end on exits, and we also have a touch down, touch inside, touch everything else. If you haven't ever looked at the box that comes up when you click on a text field, it's kind of interesting what's inside of it. <laughs> Looks very similar to a button. These are the actions. And then what we've done down here is we've said the reference outlet. This is the property that we're referencing it with. Um, I'm only doing this because I want you to kind of be familiar. This is like some of the questions. We'll talk about properties and references and ID outlet or ID action. So we have outlets. We know the outlet is the delegate. In one of the one one of the tutorials we're going to do probably today, we're going to change the we're going to change the file owner on a view, multi view. We'll look at that. But we change delegates and stuff sometimes. We also can do gesture recognizers. Wire those in, which we're going to see within the next week or so. 
Yeah, I don't think it's coming up today, but uh, all right. So I'm going to create this did end on exit, and I'm going to wire it in here. I'm going to just call mine done, and my done is going to be on a UI text field that I've created. And we know I can take two of them and wire them together just by control dragging them. But do I want to control drag it? No, I want to actually right mouse click on it. Take this guy and control drag it to the method. Okay, so I control drag it, I'm going to make a property out of it, but I want the done on exit to be wired because I'm creating an IB action out of it, not a property. Because these are properties. Oops, these are properties. <laughs> these are actions. Actions do something. They're event driven. Properties are a way of getting at the item. It's a label we're putting on the, or it's a piece of variable actually we're creating. So if we have a date and we have a text, we know we're going to synthesize it. So without even looking, I can just flip over to the .m file, come down here on the at implementation and add my synthesize line. If you do that next, you uh, will never forget to do it. You know, you don't have to add a synthesize line. If you don't have a synthesize line, what do you do? Yep, you refer to the object with an underscore. So if I didn't do this synthesize here, I automatically get this. I get this and I get this with the underscore. I know I'm going to syntax here, but I get this underscore that appears and I can use it, reference it without synthesizing it. So what does the synthesizing do? It creates the setters and the getters. <laughs> so what happens if I don't synthesize it? Do I still get setters and getters? Sure. <laughs> so why do I bother synthesizing it? Don't know. Because <laughs> then there's other people that do this. You can synthesize it as this. I'm like, well, why put that in at all? If that's the case, actually, you have to get the syntax is slightly different. You know, text, and you enter text. <laughs> I'm thinking, why do that at all? If that's the case, you might as well just not leave it alone. So, well, there was a time when synthesizing property didn't exist. Now that it exists, there was a time when it was done for you automatically. Now it's not done for you automatically. Now there's a time in which the, the current thing is don't synthesize anymore, but create the properties. So I didn't make up the logic. I'm just telling you about it. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, so let's see. I called it something else. I called it done. That's okay. We know we can resign the first responder. Uh, so we need to resign the first responder keyboard uh, when the user presses return. We can just send that actually right now. Don't know where it is. Will you be used later on? Let's just do it now because I'm thinking about it. Um, and the dot M. If we go down to this done here, it says an IB action. So now I know it's on my UI text field. I know which one it is actually. We know that sender is the event that gave us, got us here to this method. And what are we going to do? Resign first responder. The first responder on a text field is the keyboard. <laughs> Our first responder on a label is going to be a touch. There's no first responder on a label, which is kind of weird. We have first, well, we have responders. We saw them last time with the touch events in the iOS class. It's automatically for us, and we put them on the controller to control the view for us automatically. We can't ask for it. We can't ask for a touch. It just happens automatically. The user just touches the screen, and we get a touch. But we know we can get touches the same way. But that's the, it's the first responder of the screen of the view that's giving us that behavior. Okay, so we synthesized the two properties. I kind of worked ahead a little bit here, a little out of order. Now we're going to open up the app delegate. And in the app delegate, we're going to implement a method application did receive notification. So we know that the, from our model view controller, we know that the delegate is the uh, brains of the operations. It's holding the data and, the, and it's the traffic guard that's telling our view controllers where our views are and what, who can communicate with who and stuff like that. So this method is going to get called um, if a notification is received from the app. If it's running the app delegate, it's going to catch it and send it off to the underlying iOS because the app delegate is the one who's working with the underlying platform that we're on as well. So we're going to need to uh, log the event if uh, it occurs and then add the following method to the app delegate.m file. The one that we're adding to it is did receive a local notification because we're going to send the local notification from that button we press that says create notification. And so when we do that, we're just going to NS log it. Notification received. You should know what NS log means, by the way. 
Uh, notification received, and then we're going to say it's set the it's set the date. We're going to get the information from the date field, and we're going to set the, 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 the message itself. So no, so um, we're setting the notification dot, and we'll see that in a few minutes. Alert body and the notification dot fire date. It's like an alarm clock. We're going to send it the notification. It's like here's the text that's coming kind of come from our text field, and we're going to take the date from the date field, and we're going to say on this date and time then send this message and this is how your alarm clock's going to work so i'm just going to cut and paste this and stick it in the app delegate file and then uh let's see so i'm going to click on the app delegate.m file and i'm going to stick it right here up on the top and we can kind of see if the pattern that's happening with these as well. If you've missed some of the app delegate um, exercises we've done, they also are, this one's void. It's not going to return anything. This one usually turn, turn, turns true or false if, they, if it did finish loading with options or if it didn't finish loading. So all those funny little error messages you get at the bottom of the screen when your app just dies out completely and you've got this log on the bottom of all this crap that got printed out. It always says app delegate this, delegate that, app delegate all over the place and people go, oh my god, I need to fix something. When There's nothing you can fix. It's just your delegate throwing all those errors because your delegate's the brains of the operation. It's the one who's looking for your view controllers and looking for your views. Most likely you're missing a view controller or you're missing a view or the app delegate doesn't know which one to run or something like that. It's just kind of a logic error normally. But people look at that and they, because I, I know because they send me email messages, it says this. Well, I, you know, did you create the view controller? <laughs> did you assign it to the file owner? <laughs> I don't know. It has nothing to do with what you're seeing on the screen. But this one here is did receive local notification. So if you don't put this in here, your delegate's never going to receive it. If it, well, if it does receive it, it's never going to respond to anything. You can look at the rest of it, you know, did, did the application will resign active, did enter into the background, um, did enter foreground, you know, all of the other, you know, states of the application uh, will terminate. You can actually, you could put something in here if you want. If your application has a strange message, put an NS log in here. If it always terminates and say, hey, got my message. See, at least you know it's working. So, <laughs> all right, the harp on that one. Okay, so open up the viewcontroller.m file, and then we're going to implement. Well, we already did this one. If you didn't do your responding of your first responder, go ahead and do that one. Let me get that one done. Now we're going to implement the create method. So remember the method that we used um, in the interface. So we can grab the text that's going to be in all these different locations and put it together and create a notification out of it. So here we have a nslog just so we know the method actually got called correctly. We're going to nslog that create a method was called. Okay. And then we're going to say uh, ns this stuff should look like second nature to you at this point. What is this? It's going to be ns string that we're going to make. It's going to call it a date string and it's going to be the date.txt. We could actually do with the opening and closing brackets date space text that actually works as well this is the property from the component date because we propertied it we could actually run the method to get the text two different ways of doing it but this is easier for some people to comprehend so I like this method too for some reason I don't know kind of a C++ person I guess by heart so that's more C++ syntax. We can use the Objective-C syntax as well if we wanted to. <coughs> so now what we're going to do, we're going to create an NS date formatter. Same thing we did with the, uh, the pickers, date pickers, and some of the other things we did. And uh, it's going to be NS date formatter alloc in it, and we're going to initialize it. We're going to set the date format to this here, which is, happens to be what I put on the screen. <laughs> so I know what date to put in there. In fact, on the view did load, we'll put the date in there makes it easier you can just change the dates. <laughs> so make your life easier instead of having to type all the data in. On the view did load, I'm pretty sure it's in there, but if not, we can just add to populate that field with the date and the time, so then we can set it really easily. Uh, so create an NS date from the string using the date formatter. Here's the formatter. We're going to set the date format to this. We're going to set the time zone to this, which is um, going to be Pacific's daylight time, actually. Ooh, is it daylight or standard? I think 
This is on Pacific Day. I did this in the summertime last time, so I'm pretty sure this is going to be on Daylight Savings Time. <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, and then create an NS date from the string using our formatter here. So NS date alert time is going to be equal to a formatter date from string. So we're getting a date from string. We can get an integer from string, a float from string, a double from string. Nobody memorizes these things. You don't have to memorize these things for the final. I'm not going to ask you about these different built-in methods. How to do a method call? Yeah, what the methods are? No, <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. Uh, but after you've seen this a hundred times, you'll go, oh yeah, it's going to be something from string. It's going to be date from string, or integer from string, or float from string, or something. There is a kind of a method to the madness in terms of the namings of all these things. I get the application of your UI application. UI application app. Why do we need that? We need to know what app is sending the notification. <laughs> we can get our app. What are we getting? Our UI app shared application. So we're running shared application. When we're, our app is running on the phone along with everybody else's apps that are on the phone, we can identify ourselves and share it by getting the shared app name. So we can say, if we want to send a notification to the phone to put something up, we're going to say that came from us, came from our app. Create a notification and then set up its parameters. So we're going to create a U, UI local notification. So you know those little things that come up on the top? We're going to get it on the simulator, actually. You, pull, you drag it down, shows you a little message. That's what we're going to do. And uh, it's going to be a UI notification alloc in it. If notification, if it works. The phone could block notifications. You could have the security turned off. It may not work. Then notification.fire date. Set it to the alert time. The alert time is going to come out of the string that we're creating from the string field if we haven't done it yet here. Nope, we haven't done it yet. Uh, or have we done it yet? I think we did it. The fourth line down. Here's the alert time right here. It's coming from the date from string that I harped on. <laughs> That's why I forgot about it. <laughs> it is the alert time that we're going to get from the time text, from the date field called text, the text field called date. It's going to come in. It's going to be converted. And uh, time zone, I'm going to make it equal to our default time zone on the phone. Because we know the time in our app. We have to get the NS time zone from the phone, whatever time zone it happens to be in, because we need to know its time. And then uh, repeat interval zero, don't repeat it. I'm just going to put up the notification once. We could put it up like every five minutes if we want to. It would be really a pesky, pesky. That would be like a virus app. You create it and it just constantly puts up notifications to mess with you or something. That would be a bad app. Um, so schedule the notification to fire at the fire date. So app, our app, which is a shareable app, schedule notification notification. So this is the notification that we've created at this time with this text from our app. We're scheduling it as a shared object of the phone. So this will fire the notification right away. And uh, it still also fires it at the date. We set. So we're going to get the notification going and then we're going to get it whenever we set it. We'll set, when we test this, we'll set it for a couple minutes. A couple minutes down there, or one minute or something like that, as long as I can wait for it to come up. So I'm going to cut and paste and put this in the body here. I'm just going to take the body of the create method because I don't want to retype this in. Let's see how my cutting and pasting is going to work today. Off to a good start. Let's see. I moved my icons around. I can't find anything now. Uh, let's see. We're in. Uh, what are we in? View uh, View Controller M, and we're implementing the create method for when we press that button to create that notification. And oh, I've got some interesting spaces going on here. Ah, oh, there we go. We got it. We got it. We got it. String is coming from where is that coming from? That's the comment. That's the comment. Okay, thank you. We're getting good at this. This one here, the date set. What is the? I think we have a. We have a, a space that's being put in that really is part of the comment date we set. So let me go back up here and fix this one as well. 
date we set. But where's the rest of that comment? <laughs> All right, let's see what's going on here now. Uh, unused app. Yes, it is unused. Uh, unused. Okay, something's wrong. It should not be unused. Uh, let's take a look here then. The last line is missing. So we didn't get. I didn't get this part here. And I don't believe I got the closing, which, let me just cut this one here. So I should have the app schedule location notification. I don't have that one either. No, nope. good, good, good. This is good. I've got most of it all the way down to intervals equal to zero. Yeah, here we go. We missed this part here, yeah. I could cut and paste it from the solution file as well. Let me just make sure. I don't think my opening and closing brackets are going to be. I think that's going to be correct, actually. Let me just paste this in here. Ah, okay. But we got this here. This is going to be a separate line in itself. Now I think we're cooking here. I believe we're working now. So I had some problems cutting and pasting that. You can take it from the solution file, which is available as well. It'll cut and paste a little bit easier. I believe the line returns have a problem. I think that's what the problem is, but uh, we'll see. So now we're done. We're going to build and run it. So make sure you set the time to at least one minute into the future. What did I do here? Oh, you know what? Let's don't build and run it yet. I put it on the bottom here for easier testing. <laughs> Remember I said the view did load? Let's just set that to, to a date. So... If you want to make your life easier, cut and paste and put this code in the view did load method of the viewcontroller.h, viewcontroller.m, is what that should say, to populate the date field and the current date and time. It's the .m file, not the .h file. What this is going to do is create an instance of the NSDate formatter, put it into this format, set the time zone correctly, take and create a string for today's date, take the date.txt and have it equal to that string. <laughs> so that we have a date to start with. Otherwise, you actually have to type in the whole date. So I'm going to go to the viewcontroller.m file and the view did load method, which is up here on the top. And that's a typo. I have to fix that typo, actually. Paste. Good. Good deal. So now if I run it, I should, uh, unless I've got cut and paste errors, which I don't think I have. I should get a little emulator that comes up with my fabulous app with the date already populated into the text field for me. I want to leave this open because I want to look at the log down below it. Note to self. Um, so let's see. I want to put a message in here. From, how about here is a note to self. Very important. Remember this. <laughs> okay, that's a pretty strong message. Okay. Now, let's see, 1702. I think my time zone's on. No, 12? That's correct. But I say 03 up here. I'm going to make it 03. Maybe I loaded it. I'm going to make it 04. How's that? And then I'm going to create the notice. Okay, so let's just leave this up for a second here. Actually, here, we'll go back. I want to make sure I can get the notification up here. So even if my, my app is resumed, so my notification will come up. If the app is open, you'll get an alert box that comes up instead. I want to see the notification, which is why I resumed. I mean, I paused the app. So down here on the bottom, it says the notice was sent, created, a method was called. Oh, there it is. Did you just see it? I just saw it. Uh, where is it? Where did it go? Here it is. Notice. Oh, it took me back to my app. <laughs> is my notice still up there? Yes, here's my notice. This is a very, this is a note to self. Very important reminder. Remember this. <laughs> so it actually would have my icon if I had an icon. And this is the name I called my app uh, notice. My project was called notice. So now you can set reminders for yourself all day.
And uh, you can just go back here and I can set another one. Actually, I can set a couple of them and they'll queue up. So it says 504, so let me set it for 505. Let me just quickly put a couple of things in here before the minute changes. So I'm going to say, yeah. Uh, or they change now. Here is another one. And yet, yeet be another one. Here we go. So I got two of them in the queue. <laughs> and, uh, yep, oh, I already got them already. One minute ago, I had this as a note to self. Okay, so now, now, oh, you know what? I, uh, I got the nows going. I, I must have not. It's 505. I said it. Did I set it for 505? 504? I probably set it to past, previous. Anyway, you get the idea. It will actually, I've got more than one here. I've got Yippee and i got the both of them coming through. So they'll go one after, they'll trigger one after the other. So you could essentially, I'm going to clear this out. Clean it up a little bit. Um, you can, if you have this open, if you have the app open, uh, where's my app? Oh, I think it's right here. Theoretically, I should get an alert box that comes up. Let's see. I'll put it on seven. Another one, yippee. Uh, possible though I don't know if I have the alert code in there I can't remember if it's actually in there I believe I set the default project to do it by an alert but we'll see real quick if the app is actually up which means I'm using it I'm not gonna look for the notifications when I'm seeing in front of me so I could technically if I wanted to instead of putting a notification up I could change a label on it say hey like you're working on something and you're doing a quiz as an example and you have a timer it goes five four three two one countdown or something like the assignment's going to have you do. Change the value of a label to uh, match the, uh, so I say, I'm waiting one half a second. I have to talk a little bit longer here. I have to go to 507 for this thing to go off, to trigger off. Um, or have any other behavior happen. So this just happens to be sending a notification and it's the app delegate that's sending the notification. If you're not using an app delegate to do it, excuse me, not sending a notification, don't have to use the app delegate. I can put the timer in and have it set and then have the um, have the timer just trigger at a certain time do something by setting a notification but not setting the notification. <laughs> How do you get the list of notifications? Uh, excuse me? The list of notifications? You mean the drop down list? Well, how'd you do that? Oh, they're back. Yeah, there's nothing up here on my emulator. I just took my mouse and I, I, I clicked on the on the oh, carrier okay. thing, okay. and it came down. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't. Oh, here we go. Where's my uh, message box? I don't think my message box is actually working. The notification is working, but I don't believe my alert box is actually working. Let me take a look here. No biggie. I can put the alert in. I think I have to actually put the alert in, but let me see. Um, no, I don't have an alert going. This is, I could, you know, if I wanted to, I could put an alert box in here, I guess, but it doesn't really matter. So for those of you who are trying to figure out how to do the countdown, well, that, you can easily do a countdown <laughs> by using the same logic, essentially. Questions, comments, or concerns about notifications? So your app can send a notification. So that usually comes in handy for people who want to do fun stuff with it. Is it break time? I think. I think it is. Okay, so I'm going to end this this part of it.